Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh We are from group 3 And we are going to explain about materials design and lesson planning That is place However, our group members consist of Christiana Pasaribu, Faris Rastriaji, Fitri Anissa, Hana Versus Rojang Mujapasa, and Mania Dasandra As you can see in the screen there are 10 topics that is covered in this chapter. The first one is, what is distinctive about plays? The language of a play, the performance of a play, why use plays in the language learning, and using extract to improve students' oral skill, using play extract with lower levels, anticipating students' problem, further activities for for play extract and the last is using a whole play with students however the first speaker is me Fitri Anissa and as you ca as you know I'm going to explain about what is distinctive about place but first of all I'm going to briefly explain that this chapter will examine the play the place of place in the language classroom so it begins by discussing the distinctive features of place and how place can be exploited in the classroom or ways of using both play extract and whole place are so let's just move into the distinctive of about place itself so what is meant by a play According to Wikipedia, a play is a work of drama and usually consisting mostly of dialogue between characters and intended for theatrical performance rather than just reading. The writer of a play is a playwright. So, play is a literary form of writing for theater which narrates a story with elements of conflicts, tension, and action through dialogues of characters. For dramatic significance, it is divided into acts and scenes. Moreover, the writers present their feelings, emotions, and ideas through their characters and make them speak. Uh, there are six elements of play uh, that there are plot, characters, dialogue, setting, conflict, and resolution. Also, uh, there is a quotation from G. L. Senyan uh, in 1975. Uh, it is said that drama is not made of words alone but of sights and sound, uh, stillness and motion, noise and silence, relationship and responses. Uh, the other quotation is from Gareth uh, from 19, 1977. It is stating that However familiar or unfamiliar the world of a tragedy, comedy, farce, or melodrama may be, everything that we experience has its source, in the long run, in words. So, so it is indicating that the words is, uh, has an important role in the play. So, you can imagine that uh, the play rewrite rewritten in another style uh, do you think it still have the same effect you can answer it yourself and then the next topic is the language of the play uh, in the previous uh, topic it was suggested that words or language are central to the meaning of a play so by examining a few lines from a play 
we can pinpoint some of the ways in which this might be true so uh, I provide you here I provide you some lines from a play by Tunde Ikoli called The Lower Depths which is adapted from a play by Maxim Gorky and uh, the story it is set in a house in a poor neighborhood uh, of London and most of the characters living in the house are renting rooms from a landlord called Mr. Colley. Uh, the dialogue uh, the, the dialogue here I will read it for you but uh, did you notice that some of the lines is missing <coughs> right that's why uh, in the below <coughs> slide uh, the, uh, there are missing lines uh, I put I'm going just uh, read it uh, for you uh, do you have a spare tea bag? no no that's right no but why by your own so what do you want me to do about it a cup of tea please no well uh, uh as you read the extract below uh, you will see that some lines of the dialogue have been left out but this can be found underneath the dialogue uh, that is uh, the missing line so we have to decide where each one of the missing lines below uh, the missing lines is it's not uh, in the correct order so you you will have to uh, be more careful and look at the clue uh, where is the lines that is uh, correct to the order this is uh, indicating that a connection between the lines in the dialogue help you to put the missing lines in the appropriate places uh, for example in the first missing line for the teacher, the rather say no. So uh, it leads that the teacher ask him a question. So the option is B and D. Uh, but the correct lines is D. Perhaps I could share the one you have because the answer is no. And then the second missing line for from the teacher uh, is answered by rather by that's right no uh, rather saying that's right because uh, he is agreed to the statement of the teacher uh, it is going to be like that so what we can see here is the connection between the lines uh, in the dialogue. I think that's all about the distinctive place of the a play and then the language of a play. The next speaker is Hana Fursta Saroja Mujapasa. Thank you. Next is the performance of a play. So, as we have discussed before, it was already suggested that a play took on many more meanings in the performance by using gestures, movements, costumes, sets, and etc. So, it is worth noted that it is very important when considering using plays in the classroom that the performance aspect is also taken into account. The picture beside is, a, is some examples of some aspects of a performance that someone can use to direct a play. There is costume, sets, lighting, music, props, and gestures. So, 
Why do we use place in the language learning classroom? There are definitely some benefits of using place or extract from place in the classroom. First, let's begin with the words on the page. Most plays are very rich in dialogue, and using a play with students is definitely a useful and exciting way of focusing on conversational language. Dialogue Dialogue in the play clear, clearly differs from dialogue in everyday conversation. It probably contains a few of hesitations, pauses, incomplete sentences, and interruptions of everyday conversation. However, it can also be used to highlight certain important features of conversational discourse. Not only that, studying the dialogue of a play also provides students with a meaningful context for acquiring and memorizing new language. Students often pick up new phrases or formulaic expressions by studying how these are used by the characters in a play, particularly in the, if the text is read or performed in class. The, and there is advantage in asking students to act out or perform a play or extracts from a play. Getting students to work together on a mini production of a play or simply to read an extract from a play aloud in a class is an excellent, excellent way of creating cohesion and cooperation in a group. A strong sense of involvement is fostered which helps students to motivate themselves and also encourage them to learn through active participations. Students' confidence improve, not least because students have a written text as a basis from uh, which to develop their oral skills. Students who are shy or more inhibited often find working from a written text or script a less threatening way of doing a role play than having to improvise. Students get a chance to improve their pronunciation by experimenting with different patterns of intonation and practicing different sounds. So, why do we use play? My name is Paris Sastri Eji, and in this opportunity, I would like to continue explaining about another section for our discussion today. So, in the previous section, my partner have been taught us about some of the reasons why extracts from plays can help students gain greater insight into conversational language. While in this section, I will explain about using play extracts to think about language in conversation. So the section is discussed about a series of tasks and activities which aim to encourage students to develop their ability in conversational context. So when we heard about conversational context, reading and speaking will come to our mind. We all have to know that using plays with language learners can help them improve their reading and speaking skills. It can help them to encourage their creativity. It can help them experiment with the language itself with the tone of their voice, with their body language, and also their own lines if they are involved in writing the play. And it can help them out of themselves, bring them out of themselves, because we all know that some of the students like to performing or create the script itself. And the most important thing is we can help the student to involve in the whole class. Uh, even though we, ha we will found that there are some of the students that don't have that confident enough, or have less confidence to speak in front of the class, we can put them in the non-speaking parts, uh, such as in the technical parts of a production. It will give them another role, such as taking control of sound effects, making scenery, being in a chart of lights, props, and prompting their classmate from the property, and so on and so forth. So, based on this section, the first activities that can be used is using two extracts from different place. So the student will be given two extracts which deal with a two characters in their first meeting. So after the, the, the student read the two extracts, they will be given a time to answer several questions related to the two extracts. And the next activity is using the instruction on the role cards it's same as the role play and the instruction is to divide the student into pairs and each pair should be given one of the role cards provided by the teacher and after the student 
have the raw cards in their hand, they will give a time. They will be given a time to rehearse a short role play using the role cards itself. And after a minute, they will be asked to perform the role play for other students in front of the class. A variation on this activity is to get student writing mini dialogues using the instruction on the role cards. And this will work well in groups who are not very confident about their oral skills. And while other while the other student performing in front of the class, the student that watch them will be given several questions related to the to the characters that they play. It can be about the characters itself or the relationship between both of them. And the next is we can also discuss with them about the topic of a conversation itself. And this time we can be more talking about the cultures because when we first met someone, it might be diverse from country to country. And that can be work if we discuss that with our t- our students. And the next is to filling in the chart. So after we have discussed about several things with our student and also ask them to answering some several question about the characters, about the role plays, and also about the extract that they have been read, we can ask the student to compare the two te- the two extract by filling in a chart provided by the teacher, and we can ask them. Or we can ask the student to think about how the text or the extracts might differ from ordinary or everyday conversation. Uh, it can be an optional activity for a class because we also consider about our student's level. Uh, and talking about the level, there are some stages that we have to take a look. Uh, the first step is when we want to focus on functional linguistic area in text. And the example ex- activity that can be used that or we can use is we can use role play, writing dialogue, or revision work. And the next stage is close textual analysis of language in text. We can use detailed questions. And the last one is follow up, ac- follow up or extension activities. We in for the example activities we can use letter writing, completing the dialogue in the text, or filling in a questionnaire, or filling in a chart as I, as I have told you before. The next section is about using play extracts to improve students' oral skills. In the beginning of this chapter, we mentioned that much of the meaning of a play was conveyed in the performance. We also said that getting students to act out an extract from a play was a useful way of improving their oral skills. In this section, we will be more focusing on how the performance aspect of a play can be used as a useful source of classroom activities. We can begin with asking the student to reading an extract from a play. There are two kind of of activity, as you can see, which are pre-reading activity and also while reading activity. For pre-reading activity, we can divide the student into pairs and groups and ask them to discuss about some kind of question that related to the extra that have been read. It can be some kind of question about the things that happen in that in the extract that they read or something about the extract itself or uh, about they like it or not and some kind of stuff like that. And the next is while reading activity. Uh, we can ask the student in this activity, we can ask the student to read silently, uh, deal with any linguistic problems that students have with text, then we can ask them to follow this kind of precedent, procedure. The first procedure is assign a role. So in each pair, there is one student taking the part of one of the characters in the extra that they have been read and another characters of the extra that they have been read. And we can tell the student to read the text a lot according to their roles. And the next procedure is when all the pairs have finished reading out their text once, tell them to do it again, but this time with more feeling. They should think about intonation, facial expression, and even gesture while they do so. And the next is we can ask the pairs to stand up and read the text aloud once more, but this time they should act out 
the scene by moving around as they think the characters in the play might do. This activity obviously works best if the tests in our classroom are arranged in a semi-circle with an open space in the center for students to move about in. If our classroom is not arranged so that there is much room for students to move about, let them stay where they are and encourage them to use a lot of gestures. And the next procedure is to get the pairs to, to change partners so that the students still retain the same roles. Each student playing the first characters in the extract that have been read or and will now be paired with a different characters with the same characters but a different students we can tell the student to read the text again with their new partner paying attention to intonation gesture and also facial expression the next is we can tell the student to put their text away we can ask them to act out the scenes again and this time supplying the words themselves they don't need to reproduce the text perfectly and then they can improvise as they could uh, but they should aim to keep broadly to its content. And the next is student improvise an ending to the scene. And the last procedure is we can ask one or two pairs to perform the scene in front of the class. So, uh, when, we th when we're talking about these activities, uh, after they read an extract, the overall aim of using this activity is to encourage students to think about the different kind of meaning that can be communicated by the costumes, sets, and acting in a performance of a play. So, the characters is very important in this play. We have to know uh, the character itself, what is the relationship, uh, what, 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 what is the feeling that they feel each other, uh, how old they are and and so on and so forth and the set the set of the extract that the student read uh, it might be the description of two possible set for the play and uh, the, the, the last one is the costume this is not the last one I'm sorry <laughs> the costume uh, when the student read the extract, they might sing the costume of the characters itself, even if not uh, in the text. Even yeah, even if it's not in the text, but they can imagine it. They can imagine the costume that should be wear that should be wear by them when they want to perform. And the background, the background of the extract that they have been play, it's very important. It for the year, the place, and the vibes of the extract is, is, is kind of important. And I guess that the explanation for me, it's, it's, it's clear enough. I'm sorry if there's a lot of mistake in my word or in my explanation. And the next explanation will be continued by my partner. Thank you for your attention. Well, hello, my name is Manana Sandra, and I will continue explaining the subchapter about using play extracts with lower levels. Usually, plays are used most often with intermediate and advanced level students, but extracts can also be used at lower level as well. There are several activities that can be applied in lower level students using play extracts. For example, we can do activities using extracts from Harold Pinter's with title The Dumb Writer. The first activities. Students working in pairs and read the possible descriptions about Goose and Ben and decide which one they like the best. And then they write the rest of the dialogue between Goose and Ben. Second activity. Stu Teacher can bring three or four packages into the classroom which contain small objects, perhaps objects which are very unusual. For example, teacher can bring an envelope, something wrapped like a gift, 
something in career back, and etc. And students, in this activity, students have to try to guess what is in each package, package by asking questions about objects. Also, teacher is only allowed to provide one word answer to the questions. The next activity is when the students have finished writing the dialogue in, in activity 1, each pair reads it out loud to the class who has to guess which one of the, of the descriptions of Goose and Ben. And the pair choose before completing the dialogue. The next activity is teacher can deli deliver some pictures and student in pairs look at the pictures and discuss which pictures best fits with the dialogue. And the last activity is students working in, praise, in pairs try to complete the following text about Goose and Ben using their Im imagination. Rex is anticipating students' problems. Um, in this chapter, we have already looked at number of tasks and activities for exploiting extracts with students. And but before Deciding what kind of activities and tasks are to be used with students, it is important when planning your lesson, try to, act try to anticipate some of the difficulties they may have with a particular text. And there are possible questions you, may, you might ask yourself when trying to predict these problems. The first is from the background of the text. The questions are, will you need to give students a summary of the plot leading up to the text that you are using? Or can the context be easily inferred? Second, is there any cultural or historical information students will need to have in order to make the sense of the text? It is useful to know anything about the outer life or other works. And the last is, do students need to know what genre the play is in order to make sense of it? The second is from the language of the text. And do you need to help the students with, are there any words or press, press? or praise in the text which will be unfamiliar to students or should you encourage the students to check the meaning in the in a dictionary or provide exercise to help students deduce the meaning from context second are there any grammatical structures or functional areas which are not familiar students. Next, are there any discursal features of the text that might cause students difficulty? For example, students change of topic, characters, meanings, something different to what they are saying. Thus, dialogue seem to follow the usual norms of conversations or thus it disrupts this, as in many modern or as in many modern places where there often seems to be little logic in the way characters respond to each other. Is there any anything unusual or not standard about the language of the text? For example, is it rather in rather that all old fashioned language? Slang. Does it use any dialect words? Are any rhetorical or literary device used, which might be difficult for students to understand? 
For example, complicated, complicated, metaphors, apostrophe, and synecdote. The last are, are there any particular features of pronunciation which the extracts could be used in pinpoint. Next is motivating and involving students. First, how can the themes or topic of the extract be made relevant to the student's own experience by providing questions for these questions or by asking students to complete a questionnaire? By asking students to think of situations they know which are similar to the text. And next, in what skill do students need to most practice and how could, could the text be used in help be used to help them with that skill? And the last, what activities would most suit the learning style of the students working on their own with a dictionary or working with in pairs being asked to memorize sections from a dialogue or being asked to give a personal opinion in English I think that's all about my explanations thank you alright hello my name is Christiana Pasaribu so I will explain the next subchapter. It's about further activities for play extracts. In this chapter, it provides talks and activities for exploiting extracts from plays in the classroom. So here are some more talks and activities that we can use after we predict some of the difficulties that shouldn't have with text. Um, for the convenience, they have divided into four main categories. There are pre-reading activities, activities for increasing student language awareness, activities for practicing oral skills, and follow-up and extension activities. So these talks activities could be used after predicting some of the difficulties students might have with the text, as uh, I mentioned before. Um, but officially, this main categories, the four main categories, sometimes um, overlap between another another categories. For example, when we doing a talks with encor to encourage student fluency and speaking skill, um, but also student may ho have expanding their vocabulary by reading the text so this all activities used to stimulate student student interest in the text they have read and use as a discussion talks after they have read the text i will explain one by one of the main categories so i will start from the first one is a pre-reading activities so in pre-reading activities um, in these activities it encourages student ability to know um, the text before we do further activities to encourage student in reading text so in these pre-reading activities students have to know uh, the setting I mean the text, the whole text, the setting, the relationship between the characters in the text, and then uh, about the social and historical background, about the play, about the about the text, and then the teacher role is to explain the gen the genre of this play and give the lines. To the student from the play to decide which characters are speaking the lines and what setting it is and then for the next activities is activities for increasing language awareness in these activities 
student asks to identify what language function is fulfilled by the different text in the by different line in the text um, the language function in the text it can be an, a, an apology or threat a promise or congratulating something like that and then shouldn't compare two extract so shouldn't try to pinpoint differences in grammar and vocabulary so it is about the linguistic in the linguistic in the text so learning about the text and then the third is about the third activity is about, is about materials design and lens, lesson planning I'm sorry, I mean activities for practicing oral skill. So in these activities, as a oral skill, so students need to read aloud a text and then annotate the different lines in a text by describing how the line should be said. So it is about an oral skill. An activity including about speaking skills is needed for this activity and then the third and then the last activity is about follow up and extension activities so these activities shouldn't have to discuss a series of controversial statement about the theme or topic of the extract so these activities including about extension and extension that include in the talks in the text so shouldn't do activities about that some of the activities may uh, a groups or small group discussion discussing about the theme discussing about the subject of the play and values of the of the text of, of the play and word view about the play something like that All right, uh, we've come to the next subchapter. It's about using a whole play with students. So these are activities which can help to provide students with a skeleton outline for understanding a whole play. So how to understand the whole play with the student? There are some activities. Uh, name skeleton so this skeleton can be used in one of the two ways the first ways is reading a play at home in order to practice students oral skill and increase their language awareness so these activities it's really beneficial it can inf it can help the student uh, the, the teacher with the problem of insufficient class time to read the whole play so so teacher do it at home and then the second way is about preparation sessions before students attend a live performance the aim of this is to prepare students for the basic plot characters and themes of the play so the student would be free while watching it to, const to concentrate on understanding the language feature of that play all right and then uh, talks to help students before reading or seeing a whole play so the first talks is understanding the genre of that play it is important to know what the genre of the play is, so we can so student can understand um, the whole play so the first thing to understand the genre of the play is shouldn't ask some question about the expectation do they have of the play by describing a genre of the play and then given a list of characteristics commonly associated with the genre 
so sh- shouldn't know what kind of genre or moral lesson about the play and then shouldn't are given a list of characteristic of different genres all jumbled up so they need to find the exemplified in the text and then the next is about understanding the setting or social milieu of the play understanding the setting or social milieu of the play can be done by given the student play right decision of the setting of the play and ask to not jot down any association it has for them uh, it can be done by given give give the student short reading or listening comprehension about the social or historical background background of the play and then the third about understanding the character the characters and the relationship so in this term children are given the list of character from the play with a very brief description of each other so the student read that so they will understand about each characters by their description in it and then children are given a sociogram to fill in which illustrate the main character and their relationship to each other by reading the play the whole play and give them an illustrate about the main characters so they will know uh, the re- relationship about each other and then by give the student a descriptive adjective and ask to describe each character using one of the adjective and then understanding the plot in this term children are given a summary of the first few so they check their prediction against the reading or view of the play and then children are given a list of jumbled sentence and then can and they they have to put the sentence in the correct order and then the last is about understanding the themes of the play so in this term they have to discuss a certain quotation by the playwright which point to the main themes of the play and then they are asked to discuss the issues arising from the underlying session from the play And then that's all about this chapter, Material Design and Lesson Planning, please. I hope this clear enough for you to understand the whole material. I hope you can stay healthy and thank you.